there are a lot of ways to deliver fertilizer to corn and soybeans. Today we're going to focus on one of those methods in furrow applications. When we start thinking about in furrow applications of fertilizer, well, first of all, there's a big difference between corn and soybeans. Soybeans, as we all know, are much more sensitive to fertilizer, so you have to be really careful. Now, one thing in either soybeans or corn that you can do to safen the product is, number one, use water with it, basically diluting the solution, and number two, use a low salt product. All right, well, let's start in corn, and we can think about N, P, and K. We can also think about secondary and micronutrients with in furrow applications. So over the years, a lot of people have been using 103040, for example, and it's a fine product. The problem with it is it's kind of a high salt product. So where we get most concerned about salt is when we have drier conditions and lighter soil. So in a dry year, in your light ground, you may see some response from your plant where the plant could actually buggy whip. I've seen it before where guys have lost 50 bushels on yield. That's why I get really worried about those high salt products. So if you're going to use a high salt product, you've got to keep the rate, the use rate, really low, even in corn. Like for 103040 in a 30 inch row, we're usually talking about three gallons. That's our absolute max. That's roughly five pounds of salt per acre. But again, that's the absolute max. Okay, if you've got sandy soil and dry conditions, I'm gonna use even less. Now, when we turn over to soybeans, okay, it's kind of the same thing, only the soybean can't tolerate a whole lot at all. So I might be talking a quart of 103040, maybe a half gallon, something like that. It's very, very little. The number one thing that I wanna to stress to you is this. We love using some in furrow fertilizer. So we'll talk about a bunch more things yet today, but just don't forget, we've gotta be super careful with anything we're gonna put near the seed because the last thing you wanna have happen is you invested money in fertilizer and it hurt your yield. I've seen it too many times in the past. We want you to keep that rate down if you're using something in furrow on or very near the seed. Well, definitely do some experimentation on your and try the low rates but then if you want to bump it up in a couple of strips out there just to see do I gain anything from that is it still safe for my crop that's fine you know what if you kill your crop make sure it's just a real small amount of crop maybe it's just one little strip through the field or one little spot uh, just so you can see for yourself what's going to happen the other thing is if you're experimenting with some different nutrients now Brian just mentioned 103040 well okay there's nitrogen and phosphorus uh, and potassium is relatively safe at low rates around the seed too. But what if you're gonna put sulfur out there? What if you're gonna put micronutrients out there? There certainly can be an impact with micronutrients, both on germination rates and, and seed survival rates, but also on the microbial component of your seed treatment, or if you've got an in for a microbial, you may not wanna put something out there like copper or zinc really close to that. So just do a little experimentation, make sure that what you're doing is going to be safe. That's the number one thing. If you're considering using an in furrow fertilizer, let's talk about where this is going to pay the most. Just think logically, where would adding more fertilizer pay the most? It's going to be in your least fertile ground. So if you say, well, I'm gonna do what Darren said and I'm gonna try some higher rates in some spots and you go, wow, I'm getting a yield gain when I bump my in furrow fertilizer rate. Yes, you might, but what I would suggest for you in the future is place some fertilizer then two by two or in a deep band or something like that. We want separation between that seed and where the fertilizer is placed. The more soil separates the two, the better off you are in terms of safety. So I'm just trying to say, I realize you might be gaining quite a bit of yield by putting your in-furrow fertilizer in, but you're also taking a lot of risk. So if you need to go with higher rates, find a different application method. One other thing to watch if you are putting in furrow fertilizer uh, in your planter, it's are you going to mix it with something else and are they compatible? Liquid fertilizer with insecticide has been one of those things that hasn't gone so well over the years unless guys have used Capture LFR or formulations containing Capture LFR. That's been the safest bet. But still, if it's really cold out there, you wanna do a jar test first to make sure you aren't gonna have any trouble. Uh, if you add a second tank, that could really help you out too and give you more flexibility as to which products you're going to use. Now, one of the new things that's come into the market the last few years and gotten more popular has been fungicide use in furrow. And that's another one that you wanna watch. If you're putting fungicide in with fertilizer, in general, they haven't been real compatible. So just make sure you're using a good formulation. I like Temetry and Manticore. They've got that Capture LFR technology and both of those have worked well for us.
Well, once again, we do really like in furrow fertilizer, but we always suggest keeping it at a low rate, use a low salt product, and even water it down just to add to the safety. One thing about putting the fertilizer in the furrow, you can keep it away from our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up next.